In the previous episode we completed the painting stage of this B26 invader build with the markings. Now it is time to do the weathering. Ok, the first weathering thing that we need to do is to peel off the liquid mask and reveal the nice chipping that's going to appear. Silicon brushes are very helpful here because the liquid mask sticks to them and this way we can remove more stubborn pieces right away. And how cool does this look? An actual real chipping. And in my opinion there is nothing that can beat some real chipping like this one where the chips occur in a natural way and what I mean by that is that removing the paint on top reveals the aluminum underneath the paint. Now let's reactivate the hairspray and continue with the chipping. On many of my reference images I could see crew walking on the top surfaces of the airplane so I was thinking that it is probably quite nicely weathered up there and then I found some images on the internet which allowed me to see how the top looks on a aircraft which is restored to a flying condition but regardless it was quite heavily weathered and the pattern shows that the weathering of this aircraft is very heavy indeed on the top surfaces. So here I'll go rather heavy then the rest of the weathering will tone this down a little bit so I don't think we have anything to worry about. I understand that this might not be to everybody's taste, but I also think that we have all heard the no crew chief would ever mantra and we have all seen that sometimes it just doesn't hold up very well. Interestingly enough, on the pictures I have seen of this flight restored aircraft it appears that the gondolas were also repainted at some point and then they got scratched up once again. So for me this means that this is a very heavy traffic area and probably because of the heat of the engines the paint doesn't hold up very well. To be perfectly honest I don't always understand how this process works which means I don't really control the process, rather do what I know and hope for good results. Sometimes things happen as I want them to happen, but other times it's just not the case. So I keep on using it and I keep on learning stuff. As usual, links to most tools and materials I use can be found in the description of this video. Now let's make ourselves a nice pin wash using some Starship Base Lodge oil paint and some white spirit. I am going to apply this pin wash directly onto the flat surface. Which to be honest is rather terrifying, but since I have seen quite a lot of people doing this to a very successful finish, I think I should try it too. And the reason behind this is that I really like the finish, the surface sheen on the aircraft as it is now and really don't want to apply any varnishes, so as they say, here goes nothing. And this was being fairly highly diluted, it should not have a very serious effect, which is the goal. I really want the panel lines to be, of course, uh, highlighted, but very subtly. My experience so far shows that on some places we might need some going over the same area twice to achieve a better opacity of this wash but that's okay because having control over the process is 
Hey, good thing. On the neutral grey belly of the aircraft, I am going to use Starship Fuel again as a pin wash. This Starship Field color is a little bit lighter and also a little bit cooler, so in my opinion it is better suited for such a light color as the neutral grey. There are a couple of things that you should have in mind when using such a pin wash that is made out of foil paint and a white spirit and this is probably true for other types of washes and one of the things is that as you use the wash and time passes on the white spirit evaporates and essentially what happens is that your wash is getting thicker and thicker another thing is that it is probably a good idea to use a mask just like when you paint with your airbrush Before I continue any further, I will apply a coat of flat clear varnish over the decals to facilitate the weathering and to blend them in with the rest of the surfaces. I added a very tiny amount of buff into the flat clear and with this I am going to add some fading on the more horizontal surface of the decal. The next step will be some additive chipping using a silver pencil which is my preferred method for some smaller areas where greater control is needed and I'm not that good with a brush to do a thousand chips and then some inside of them so I prefer to use the pencil. This Prismacolor silver is probably the best silver pencil out there does a great job representing an actual metal. You can see that without any talent whatsoever, our chipping looks rather nicely. Just the silver on its own would look rather overwhelming in my opinion, so I'm going to continue using a sand colored pencil. This is from AK's green and brown shading and effect set. So with this I'm going to try and simulate some superficial paint distress which can and will occur where the paint did not get entirely damaged and removed to reveal and expose the metal underneath but rather was nicked and thus a different color occurred. Once again the effect is not visible right away, it's just part of the whole thing. This will be especially helpful on the leading edges to kind of complement the chipping so it does not stand out so much like a sore thumb. But I'm also going to apply this on the surfaces where people walk and where we have most of our weathering on the top of the wings and also we'll do something on the lower surfaces as well. On dark colors the effect is even more powerful, of course because of the extra contrast and just like here on the doors that are constantly opened and closed for the reloading and checking of the guns, it makes sense to have some more paint issues and I'm not going to forget also about the nose art, this can be also used to highlight such areas as panel lines. The thing with these pencils, if you are not familiar with them, is that you need a matte surface for them to work properly, because in other cases the pigment just don't have anywhere to go. And one other thing is that in any case some of this pigment will fall and instead of waiting it to get wiped off by my fingers or anything else, I'm going to just blend it slash remove the excess using a silicone brush.
here towards the tail end of the airplane I'm going to only do some panel line edging which I'm going to try and do in a random way. I don't see any reason for this area to have heavily buttered paint and also the images that I have does not suggest such a weathering pattern. So this I think should be sufficient. For the bottom of the aircraft where we have neutral grey and for the anti-glare area I will use light grey pencil and here I will do again mostly panel line edging but for some areas like the leading edges and around some access panels I will go a little bit heavier with chipping. The reason for this low intensity weathering is that the wings are quite far above the ground and accidental damage should be fairly uncommon thing to appear. That's a little bit different on the top where we have a lot of chipping but there is at least a proper reasoning behind this chipping to be there in the first place. Okay, now let's start messing around with some oils. I'm going to start by applying some Starship Field here and there, mainly on the control surfaces to do some streaking. And here it is important to take into account that the trailing edges of the wings are swept forward, so the airflow is not perpendicular to them. And just like that, we're doing some streaks, blending in where necessary, where the streaks are too obvious, too heavy, and continuing forward, doing the same in some multiple areas. Next up, I would like to add some more earthy tones on top of the airplane where the crew walked up and down and I would imagine that their boots were not particularly clean. For that I'm going to use Aptelung 093 Earth, then maybe something else to reduce the red hue of this paint, but let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to focus mainly on the wing root area and then we'll reduce the amount going further into the wing. For the bottom of the nacelles where most of the grime from the engines is supposedly going to end up, I'm going to apply a few layers of oil paints and first I'm going to start with some Starship Field which I'm going to gradually blend from each panel line towards the back and then I'll let it dry sufficiently so I can apply the next layer without the current layer being damaged and disturbed in any way. With the first layer on the nacelle applied, I'm going to use the same color to add some grime around the area where the turrets live. Because, you know, this is a mechanism which uses some grease and oil or whatnot. So, why not dirty up this area a little bit? Just like on the top of the wing, I'm going to add some dirt streaks in a few special areas which are prone to exhibit such kind of effect again with some starship field these are going to be mainly areas around the flaps some acutators that may or rather will leak some of their oils and other stuff that helps them work Another place where I will facilitate the black 
watercolor pencil is the inner side of the wings and here I will try and add some small streaks which are coming from the dust and dirt accumulated in the panel lines and various crevices. The final wearing layer for this underside of the nacelle, talking about oil and fuel and other crap collecting on the bottom and nearby surfaces is a layer of starship base sludge which will be very randomly dispersed all over the place and I'm doing this over a surface that has been pre-wet with some mineral spirits this will facilitate the blending one thing we should not forget in such places is that the gear bay door should also receive probably some similar wearing and after some stippling i am going to leave this for like 12 hours to see if it's going to need any more work on it so until then I'm going to do something else and this will be a little bit of work on the panels which are covered with fresh olive drop mainly around the nose area and the cockpit and the reason that I want to do this kind of job is because these panels look quite uniform especially on the sides and I would like them to be a little bit more interesting so I will employ some buff here and there in the form of oil paint and with this I'm not trying to replicate anything seen on the real aircraft but rather to make things a little bit more interesting to look at so again using the artistic freedom card to get some interesting effects now that I have spread the oil paint with dry brush I will use a little bit of mineral spirits on the brush to help me blend the oil a little bit more and of course to reduce the saturation this is kind of a game of chasing the effect and requires some back and forth or that's at least my case and now that I have the effect I'm looking for I will use a pointed q-tip that had a very slight contact with some uh, white spirit to remove what's on the other side of the panel line. I did the rest of the panels off camera for access reasons. The picture now looks more complicated, broken down into pieces and hopefully not too unrealistic. So let's move along and do some more stuff using a watercolor pencil called sepia, believe it or not. I will add a little bit more saturated brown color on the panel line that marks the wing root to account for probably a little bit more denser, maybe more humid dirt accumulation. Nothing very harsh or too obvious, just a little bit to make things a little bit more saturated. I'm going to apply this color also on the top of the aircraft. Again focusing around the panel lines where moisture can make the dirt and the dust look a little bit darker than on the flatter surface. And this is going to be it for this color. Another effect that I think will be beneficial for the overall view will be a very carefully applied dark grey panel accent color from Tamiya just around the perimeter of the windows of the canopy where they meet the frame. I'll give this a little bit of time to cure and then I'll wipe off any areas which are too much with a Q-tip. The next stage 
of the wiring will be to apply the exhaust and heat stains on the airplane and I'm going to start with a base layer of turquoise and flat black so let's apply this first a little bit over the panel lines and this is our base layer so we don't have to define some perfectly good structures and now I'm going to start outlining the suit coming out from the exhaust stacks I don't know if you can distinguish this from the dark color of the camouflage but rest assured once we are done with this it will be pretty nicely visible this base layer should be representative for the oldest really nicely caked up suit that comes out from the engines so we'll have some more stuff coming I'm going to use the same mixture to create the heat staining that comes from the radiator outlets and the shell ejection ports and also around the guns. And since two of the guns on the wings were deleted, I will make a bigger heat stain on the existing gun and a hint of staining on the other two. And I'm pretty sure that this step is going to surprise you. Now I'm going to apply some hairspray over the exhaust stains. Next up comes the lean mixture residue. And for its very distinctive color, I'm going to try and replicate it by using a combination of LP36 Insignia White and XF57 Buff. As always, the mixing ratio is eyeballed, so it doesn't exist. Alright, now let's reactivate the chipping fluid. And with this I'm trying to replicate how the crew walking and working around the engines knocked out some of this lean mixture residue this is a first time for me to try and replicate this effect and probably it's not going to be the best version but still it's going to be one more interesting area where this model can definitely be a little bit more different than the rest that I have seen so far. And while this chipping will be mostly concentrated around the panel lines, because you know, opening hatches and fasteners, and also panel lines can attract such kind of events. But besides panel lines, I want to make the transition a little bit rougher. So to account for this probably worn down or just scuffed up is a better term. But anyways, I want to have that effect which comes to support the idea of high traffic area around here. Most of the traffic around the nacelles and the engines occurs right around this area, hence the need for more severe scuffing of this residue layer. The debris that result from the chipping fluid removal I will remove later with a large flat brush when the area is completely dry so I can avoid removing more of the hairspray in a uncontrolled and unwanted manner. 
With this stage of the exhaust staining complete, I would like to take a step back and reinstate some of the grime that was collected underneath the engine nacelle with some oils. To do this, I am going to carefully spread some Starship base sludge in the areas where I think it is most likely to have some oily stuff accumulation and due to gravity this should be on the bottom of the nacelle in my opinion of course and everyone that had a car which leaked oil at some point knows what kind of a mess oil tends to create so we can go rather heavy here and especially when you mix it with some dust and dirt things become very ugly very fast I think that we are in a good place with those broader accumulations of oily things so who is ready for some fresh stuff for this I am going to use AK interactive shaft and bearing grease uh, this is very potent potion so some care is very necessary upon application it's plenty shiny and gives me a very hard time to show it to you in something different than a head on but there we go all right the final stage of this exhaust staining will be to add some fresh exhaust stains and this i will do with some straight flat black heavily diluted the goal here is to stay inside the lean mixture residue in the next episode we are going to do the final assembly and finish this model if you want to be up to date while i am building visit my patreon page the link is in the description of this video as always thank you for watching and until next time happy modeling fellas